Hi! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Kayla and I like to talk about books, book reviews, reading vlogs, Song of Ice and Fire, lots of stuff like that. So if any of that interests you, then please like, subscribe, and today I'm going to be talking about the book Reykjavik by Ragnar Jonasson. I'm gonna try and say all of the Icelandic names correctly, but I still might butcher some when I'm caught up in talking about the book, so really apologies. I am not super familiar with Icelandic. <laughs> So, Reykjavik, I will be starting with a little bit of a synopsis and then I will move into my thoughts, my review, and then I probably will have to have a spoiler section. I will give a ton of warning though because honestly this is not something that you want spoiled. When I get to that section I'll make a really big announcement. I will also leave a timestamp down below because I don't want to spoil this book for anyone but I probably am going to want to talk about the ending a little bit. So let's just get into it. Apologies if I'm out of breath. I am pregnant. That's why I'm out of breath. Reykjavik was so, so good. I'm just going to talk about this because like this is one of two pieces of media I've consumed this week that have just been chef's kiss amazing. So the book Reykjavik follows the story of this young woman, young girl named Lara, who takes a summer job on the island of Vite, which is just off the coast of Reykjavik. So it's like an island that this wealthy and really influential family in the area owns a summer house on and they hire her. They've hired a few young girls to be kind of like a maid, a housekeep for the summer while they stay there. Towards the end of her stay, this girl Lara actually ends up going missing and nobody ever hears from her again. Nobody knows what happened. No body is found. I mean, nothing. She just seemingly disappears into thin air. And because the people who are, the people who are housing her and who are employing her are relatively influential and wealthy, I feel like the investigation by the original police officer, the original detective, is just not taken maybe, I think he's a little bit nervous to get too in depth into it and to really explore it in the way that he should have initially. So the girl goes missing, I believe it's the 1950s, and then the book kind of chronicles a few decades that pass and every few years the story is revisited. The police officer's detective is um, interviewed again and kind of asked about the case and there are never really any updates and like I said the original investigation was just never very comprehensive. So unfortunately it just kind of stays still, stays stagnant for a while until the mid-1980s and that is where the bulk of this story takes place. So there is a little bit of like the flashback of when the time happened and she went missing, the original investigation. There like I said are a few time jumps over the years and then it gets into the meat of the story in the mid-1980s when a really young journalist starts investigating the piece again, kind of nearing ice Iceland's or Reykjavik's 200th anniversary celebration. I love, right off the bat, this is something I'll get into a little bit more, but I love the backdrop of having all of these real historic events kind of happening and occurring while this obviously historical fiction is taking place. It's a fictional story, but it just makes it feel that much more real. So I really, really like that. But anyway, as the 200th anniversary of Reykjavik is unfolding around them, he has been revisiting the Lara story and is actually really, really digging into it and doing the investigative journalism that it, it's just incredible. And it's kind of sad as well, though, because really pretty quickly, it's uncovered that the original investigation really didn't do justice for Lara. So she went missing and really nobody looked for her that hard to be honest and nobody prodded and poked around like they should have. So like I said this young investigative journalist Valur Robertson starts investigating and really starts honestly uncovering a lot and starts getting into the meat of it and he's releasing these weekly articles updating on all of the things he's uncovering and he gets this big break. Somebody who knows something about Lara contacts him and basically says, I've got this information. She's dead. I know where she's buried. And immediately, like, the momentum just really, really starts for him. So as Valor is uncovering more and more about this story, we just dig deeper and deeper into what happened to Lara, and his sister, Suna, actually helps him uncover 
the rest of this mystery. And the rest of the book basically chronicles the investigative journalism that is almost taking over in place of the the investigation, the police investigation that really never was deep enough. It never went as far as it should have. And it's just fascinating. I love it. I feel like it is not sensationalized in the way that a lot of these stories are. It unfolds in a way that feels very natural. It unfolds in a way that feels, I don't know, I'll, I'll just get into some of my review now because I'm already talking about it. Yeah, what I love about this book, I think that its pace and its timing is amazing. It unfolds in a way that feels very natural. Like I said, it is not sensationalized. There are not unnecessary twists and turns. The, I guess, twists and surprises that happen, they all make sense within the plot and they don't feel crazy out there. They just feel like exactly enough to keep you interested and to keep it engaging. So I absolutely love that it, there was nothing crazy over the top about it. As I kind of mentioned before, the next thing that I absolutely adored about this book is that it takes place with the backdrop of real historical events that were happening in Reykjavik at the time. So the mid-1980s, the 1980s in general, of course, there was a lot of shifting in technology in the world, period, I guess, but I think for Iceland and Reykjavik in particular, there was a lot happening to kind of put the country on the map to move the whole city forward. One of the biggest things being obviously the Reagan Gorbachev summit, summit that occurred there where they met. These are two massive world leaders choosing this tiny neutral nation to meet in and for a place like Reykjavik that was a huge huge deal. Um, I mean that would have probably been a big deal anywhere but I can only imagine what that felt like, that boost for their economy and the boost for even just putting them on the international map a little bit more. That was such so cool to have these real historical events as the backdrop of historical fiction because it made it feel so much more tangible and so much more real as a reader. So you were feeling like this Lara is real because it's against the backdrop of all of these things that were real that we did read about in history books. Like I said another one was the 200th anniversary of Reykjavik. It, it was just so so well done. There wasn't too much of it but it really transformed transported you back to the time. It really transported you into the story. So you felt, I felt so immersed when I was reading this. Like I was there. It really inspired me to want to go to Reykjavik, to be honest, which was already a place that I was interested in. My dad told me this was like a great place to visit, but now I'm like, oh, that has shot up my list definitely a lot more because it just was so fun and so immersive to read this book. So I really enjoyed that. And as I said, again, nothing was over the top. I guess another really interesting one was kind of like how TV and radio evolved and came into being in Iceland because obviously it's like more removed from a lot of the world and it's just so cool to see a lot of that infrastructure get built up like over the course of the story. That was one thing that I loved like right off the bat in the beginning chapters which is that there are those time jumps and each time jump you kind of get an update on what's happened in the last like decade in Reykjavik. So I thought that was so cool and I'm not even from there. I think if you were from there or had visited it would be even more passionate but that was just so so cool. So I really really enjoyed that and I thought that again it made it feel so visceral just like you were there like you could feel the mystery you could sense the shivers and the shudders and the chills oh it was so good um another thing kind of in that same vein of nothing being over the top is that the twists and the turns that the book takes are reasonable you know they feel like they make sense within the story and then I also just absolutely love the whole um way that they kind of addressed the powerful group of people that were involved in Lara's disappearance basically. So it's a lot of like the most powerful people in Reykjavik like land developers, politicians, and it's just a really interesting way to look at kind of the anti-corruption coming out of that. I love the way it kind of touched on the class and the power and the influence and all of that, but it didn't feel again like it was hitting you over the head with it. It just felt so natural within the story and the context. So honestly, I could rave and rave and rave about this book. I don't really think I have a lot of drawbacks 
at all. I don't think I have a lot of negatives to talk about. I do think because it's not really, really sensationalized, I don't know, if you're used to some really over-the-top twists and turns in your books, maybe you won't love it. But if you want something that just kind of transports you, I think it is so good at that. Um, so I really recommend it. I think something else that's really just intriguing in general is I think a lot of people find that Iceland is an intriguing country and so the setting of this particular mystery in that particular natural landscape is just fascinating. It's a great fit. It works really really well so yeah super pumped on this book honestly I don't have a lot of negatives I am going to be talking about some of the spoilers now so if you have not read it and you do not want it to be ruined for you like and I recommend reading it like go read it I'm gonna be talking about some spoilers now please click off if you don't want the book spoiled okay something that I absolutely loved was how we get kind of used to Valor he was the investigative journalist he He's investigating this piece and we get really used to that and again he's popping up with all these big names he's really digging into it and then like when he is pushed in front of that bus it is sudden and it doesn't like I said it doesn't feel like forced or anything but it is sudden and I absolutely love the way that that just like took the turn and then all of a sudden Suna his sister is taking over all of the investigation and I absolutely loved that I love the kind of somewhat unexpected friendship of Suna with Valor's girlfriend uh I forget her name but it's okay I love that somewhat unexpected friendship that forms even though it's sad that her brother died this actually ends up bringing like richness into Suna's life. It opens up the idea of doing something different with her life. I love that for her character. Absolutely love that. And then the other thing that I really thought was so clever was that they've got this group of influential friends who are all involved in this. And we find out obviously pretty early on that Lara is not alive and that is confirmed later. The actual person who's truly responsible for it is someone you wouldn't expect, but it makes sense. It makes sense in the context. Oh my gosh, there's like a fighter jet going by. Hold on a second. We live by a NASA airport, by the way. So when those happen, that's like NASA doing stuff in the sky, in space. Anyway, so what I absolutely love is that there's, the person we find out is really responsible is one of the group. It's like a little bit of a twist though. It's not exactly who you'd expect. I know I had my suspicions of like Hugney, basically. I thought he was fully responsible. And then we find out that it was actually Dog. Dog Bircher is like the editor of the paper that Valor works at. So I thought that was a fascinating thing because there's all of these little clues in the beginning of the story that you kind of like reminisce on when you get to that point in the book. You're like, oh, that makes sense that he like was trying to give him distracting assignments. And he was like encouraging him, but also in some ways trying to like take his attention away. He would be like, yeah, 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 but make sure you finish this piece about the 200th anniversary, which doesn't seem that suspicious. But then you look back on it and you're like, oh, that makes total sense. And he does have ties to this influential group. He's just way more low key about it. It also makes sense that he would be so much more low-key about it as all the other people are like Yeah, that's my friend I guess and he's kind of like way more under the radar It makes sense that if you're the person responsible, so all of it just was so fascinating I love the way it unfolded like I said I love the like twists, but they made sense. They weren't like twists out of left field They were just kind of it was a story unfolding and I absolutely loved it. Okay, spoiler section over. I do just want to say, again, I loved Suno's journey. I loved that we actually got some character development in the midst of this mystery, which is not always something that you get. Um, I love that, again, I'm such a sucker for a setting being eerie, intriguing. I think that that adds to the whole air of the story. And to me, Reykjavik and Iceland in general is so intriguing, like land of fire and ice. So very, very cool. Totally the vibe and I highly recommend it. I've only read a few books this year, but it has been hands down my favorite and I suspect it'll end up being one of my favorites of the entire year. Honestly be holding on to my copy and recommending it for years to come because it is such a flawlessly done mystery. 
so that's what I want to say about it you let me know below if you've read this book if you're interested in reading it other than that like subscribe thank you so much for watching and I will see you later